Professor, a, a Juliana fez uma pergunta sobre trabalho e quase roubou minha pergunta. <risos> Mas a, a pergunta vai continuar no lado, na questão do trabalho, que no livro Descontentamento da Democracia, Sim. o senhor diferencia trabalho, uma tradição filosófica sobre trabalho livre e trabalho assalariado. E menciona né, que a, ao longo da história a gente abandona a ideia de trabalho como algo que forma cidadãos virtuosos, independentes, para algo que seria fruto de um suposto acordo Sim. voluntário. A minha pergunta é uh, duas. Dentro do contexto do Brasil, onde a gente tem cerca de 39% dos trabalhadores informais, ou seja, sem uma rede de proteção é, adequada, e grande e uma parte considerável, é, é, muitas vezes, é doutrinado com a ideia de que são empreendedores de si mesmos, Uh, no, no, nesse estágio do capitalismo em que vivemos, uh, como a gente consegue endereçar essa desigualdade no meio de trabalho, recuperar a ideia de trabalho como algo que seria geração de cidadãos virtuosos, uh, dentro do contexto do capitalismo de hoje, onde você tem um desmantelamento de proteções uh, sociais, como no caso desses 39% no contexto brasileiro. Sim. Yes. What it suggests is that we need to undertake a new political project devoted to the dignity of work and what it means in practice. Now, no politician will say that he or she is against the dignity of work. Everyone proclaims it as a slogan. But what does it mean in practice? Part of what it means, to go to your point about the civic tradition, seeing work in relation to a civic project, part of it means recognizing that work is not only about making a living. It's also the way in which we are able, each of us, to contribute in one way or another to the common good and to win recognition and honor and social esteem for doing so. And we often forget this aspect of this element of recognition. But the dignity of work depends on that, the frustrations we've been discussing that many working people feel who've been left behind by the last four decades of economic policies. Some of those frustrations have to do with the material inequality and deprivation. But a lot of the frustrations and legitimately so, have to do with the sense that the work they do, the contributions they make, are not noticed or honored or recognized. And so this goes to the dignity of work. Martin Luther King put it beautifully. Just before he was assassinated, he went to speak to a group of striking sanitation workers in Tennessee. And what he told them was this. He says that in the final analysis, the person who picks up your garbage is as significant as the physician. Because if that person, the sanitation worker, doesn't do, uh, if they don't do their jobs well, then disease will be rampant. And then he concluded, all labor has dignity. So I think we need to connect work and recognition with empowering working people, whatever their job, as citizens. And to do that means extending civic education throughout uh, the uh, civil society so that it's accessible, including those who don't go to university. One of my favorite examples, historically, of this civic role of worker respect and recognition The Knights of Labor was an early American labor movement in the late 19th century. And they were demanding, as labor unions do, shorter hours of work, better pay, better safety. But one of their demands was reading rooms in factories so that on their breaks, workers could read newspapers and magazines and inform themselves about public life so that they could be empowered as democratic citizens. So however we work this out in detail, I think it's important to connect the dignity of work with, the, with equipping people to become effective citizens who can exercise a meaningful say in how we're governed.